Hello! Differential equations have proven very effective in modeling all sorts of phenomena in all of science and technology. And it, it is hardly an exaggeration to say that mathematical models with differential equations is used in all of the natural sciences. But while you can only write down explicit analytical solutions for the simplest of such equations, when you get to the more interesting equations that actually have a real-world application, you usually need to solve it on a computer with a numerical method. And that is why you and me are going to implement a tool on a computer in Python to solve ordinary differential equations on a computer using several numerical methods. This module for Python that we will be building will be uh, similar to the one that I implemented in uh, my video on disease modeling. But this time, we instead of going through it very quickly in a single video, I have a series of videos planned for you, your enjoyment and knowledge seeking. So let's do it. We are going to be working with uh, ordinary differential equations. That's ODEs that uh, can be written in a special abstract form, thusly. The derivative of some function u equals some function on the right side of the equation, which is a function of the u and t. Where here, here t is, can be time or some other variable. I notice that you have the derivative on the left-hand side, and on the others, on the right-hand side, you have some more convoluted expression that can be anything. Now this sort of equation has an infinite number of solutions so we also need some initial condition. So the uh, the u evaluated at point zero has some initial value. Now at first sight this equation uh, may appear to be a uh, just a first order differential equation in that is it has only a first order derivative but uh, we, as we shall see in a later video, it uh, can be, by using auxiliary variables, we can turn this into a set of equations re representing a higher order derivative. So let's work through some examples about, of equations that can be written on this form. So we all realize that they can, right? So say we have some equation that is written y squared, the derivative of y in t, or in x in this case, equals x. And we have an initial condition, the first y equals some value. Now if we set u equal to y and t equal to x and rearrange this uh, equation a bit, we, uh, well, we first, first we insert it, we get u squared derivative u times t, and then we can divide through by u squared, and we get something like this. Agree? And as you can see, now our right hand side is indeed a function dependent on both u and t equal to u to the power of minus 2 t. Right? And we can usually model all sorts of phenom phenomena in this way. So, for instance, say the equation governing the uh, exponential growth of money in a bank account or a population of animals or bacteria with infinite uh, resources would be something like this. Wherever alpha is larger than zero is some given constant repre representing the growth rate. And here we also have a simple right hand side uh, expression f of u and t equal to alpha u exponential growth growth under limited resources is the following. Where again we have some uh, growth factor alpha and we also have r which will be the maximum possible value of u because we see when u equals r this expression inside the parenthesis will become zero and we won't have any growth at that, that time, right? That's another one. Radioactive decay is another example, also a somewhat simple expression. The derivative of u equals minus a times u, where a is larger than zero. 
and uh, here A represents the rate of decay of our radioactive material U. We can model a body in a fluid by the following equation U derivative plus B times the absolute value of U times U equals gravitational acceleration. So here B must be larger than uh, zero and is the, uh, the, the resistance in the fluid and uh, U will be the body's velocity. So you can recognize this as some uh, friction term or drag term, right? Now if we rearrange this uh, somewhat we see that we can also get this on our wanted standard form, like so. Where again the right hand side is indeed some function dependent on u and t. Lastly we also have uh, Newton's law of cooling where the u in this case is at the temperature of somebody and the change in that temperature will be simply minus h u minus s and here also we have a parameter h which is larger than zero is uh, the proportionality constant which you normally estimate from experiment and s, s is the temperature of the surroundings of the system or the object that is cooled. And again we see that the right hand side is some function dependent on u and, uh, and t. So those were some few examples of differential equations that we will be able to solve when our uh, framework is complete, which will be in a few videos time. In the next video we will implement the simplest finite difference uh, method for solving uh, differential equations called the forward Euler method. See you there.